Please, Lucy, after 20 seconds, start, please. Yeah. Good afternoon, Archer parents. Welcome. It's wonderful to be able to have your company um, this afternoon. I do hope that you are well, and I, I do hope that you have uh, seen your young person really enjoy the beginning of their year nine journey. I'm simply so sorry that we are not able to meet in person this afternoon. It really is beginning to feel like a long time since I've seen many of you in person. But I do hope that you understand why that is sensible, both for your health and well-being, but also for that of staff and children, whilst we navigate these uh, challenging times surrounding COVID and ensuring we keep our schools safe so that the most important thing can happen, which is your children here every day learning and thriving at school. We hope that that will evolve over time. Um, but of course, for now, I hope you can understand why we are being as sensible as we are. But it does continue to feel strange and you do feel a little bit further away than I would like you to be. Um, but I do hope that things are going in the right uh, direction. The most important thing, of course, is that we are in fact all together in this online world and that we do have the opportunity to share and explore collaboratively what the year nine element of our school community is all about for your young person. This is such a crucial part of their school career, but a really special one as well. Year nine is very different at the Archer compared to most schools. We do it very differently and we do it very differently deliberately. We do it differently because we know how to create the very best opportunities for our young people. And we believe that that is about a bespoke, carefully created curriculum that gives them a greater personalization, broader opportunities, the chance to learn in depth, but also coupled with that, a broad range of opportunities to grow as a young person on that brink of um, adulthood, hopefully a little bit way off yet. But the opportunity to be more independent, the opportunity to have leadership opportunities, to take a key role in shaping and growing their school for the future, as well as in the here and now. All of this is coupled with broader experiences in school, particularly through enrichment. We can't wait for that to start in the next few weeks, but also through trips and visits. And whilst they may be a little smaller than we would hope, we are being as ambitious as we can be, as ambitious as we know is safe at this particular point. But the purpose of this evening is really to set the stall out for the year nine ahead for your young person. And my goodness, what a start they have made as a year group. I think Mondays may quickly become the most favourite day of the week for the year group. But yesterday, as they hurtled through their creative and forming arts subjects, moving then into their taster subjects, their purple and green subjects, they had such a morning. They were full of it when they came down for lunch yesterday. Um, that has already captured their imagination and we know how ready they were for that. But as I said, this evening is about being informed and for you to be confident and comfortable in terms of next steps that are expectations for your young person, but also how you can best support them at home in making the very most of every opportunity available to them at school so that they enjoy every step of the journey of year nine as this particularly special year but also crucially ensuring that it is firmly labelling and setting the foundations for upper school and what comes next. But it's a bit of a both in that way. It's making absolutely the most of every minute, exploring these new subjects, these new experiences, and at the same time, putting those stones firmly down for the future. So how will this afternoon work? Well, um, shortly I shall hand over to Mr. Constantino, known very well, of course, to you all as your childhood of year. And he'll talk in detail about the formation of Year 9. I'm also uh, delighted this evening to be joined by Mr Oakley, my assistant head, who will particularly talk to you about curriculum and assessment and progress and how that is measured in Year 9. Because, of course, as you know, your child has moved into their GCSE foundation year and we're conscious that assessment changes quite significantly, deliberately, but ensuring that you and also your child are really comfortable in what that looks and feels like ahead of you receiving their target grades in a couple of weeks time. 
But year nine in our curriculum and school model is very deliberately set out, as I've mentioned. And what we call year nine is the stage in our Archer journey, our Archer graduate as, as the Archer analyst. And really, this is about a change in pace for year nine students. I think they've already noticed that because they have begun their core GCSE courses and they've made some choices around other subjects that they will study. We have taken that approach because we want them to have a more personalised curriculum. We want them to try out different things so that when they are ready to make their final GCSE choices for upper school, they really feel they can do that from a breadth of experience and depth of learning. We do throughout this year truly want to encourage them to take risks with their learning to develop their resilience, their confidence around their learning and to look at how they manage when they find things difficult, when they stumble, when they get things wrong. How do we help them to build themselves um, around that? It's also a time for the curriculum to mature around them. So, for example, they move away from thematic learning and much more into our curriculum unit called SPEC, which is looking at citizenship, politics, PSHE the types of issues that they need to be exploring as young adults so that they can make good and safe choices for themselves and for their peers in the complex modern world that we live in. But it's also about helping them to become increasingly analytical and articulate in their work, to really get beneath the skin of those subjects and become real subject specialists. And that is such a wonderful aspect um, of Year 9. Building around that, of course, is the growth of our enrichment programme. We know that your young person missed out on elements of that last year and we therefore want to come back really firmly and strongly so that they can make the very most of uh, year nine and how that sets them up for the future. But all things at Duke of Edinburgh and student leadership are certainly coming your child's way. So what I'm going to do now is to hand over to Mr Constantino um, and he will very much focus on the, the detail that sits behind those ambitions that I've outlined to you. Mr Constantino will then hand over to Mr Oakley, who will really focus on the assessment and grading element. If at any point you have any questions this evening, we're very keen to gather those, please do use the Q&A function and Mr Oakley will be managing that this evening. Just a reminder that we are running in two parts. The first section is uh, with myself and my colleagues, and then at 5.30, we will move into the second section with your transform tutor. And Mr. Constantino will touch on that slight logistical exercise uh, with you in a few moments. So parents, I look forward to seeing you um, a little bit later on this afternoon. I'm gonna hand over to Mr. Constantino now. Thank you, Ms. Harrison. Um, good evening all. I am Mr. Constantino, head of year nine now. It sounds quite crazy to say, but I'm very excited about it. Um, to echo Ms. Harrison, I suppose, I wanted to start by saying how amazing year nine have started this year. It's been lovely seeing them come back to school more maturely and motivated as they start their GCSE foundation courses. Um, so what do we actually want for year nine? So I'm going to share some slides with you now um, and Hopefully someone would let me know if it's not quite working, but the first part of the year has really been on making sure we're supporting students return to school. Quite a well-being focus, I will admit, but I think, however, we always need to keep in mind celebrating achievement and the effort of our students. And I think that's what I want to talk about largely today. Um, we want to encourage and motivate them to make the most out of year nine. Um, as I mentioned, the students are studying for their foundation GCSE courses, which means a step up academically. This year is really about preparing them for their GCSE years in years 10 and 11, starting to develop some of the necessary skills such as independent learning, academic resilience and encouraging a growth mindset alongside learning revision skills that stand them in good stead for future years. In order to allow our students to maximise this learning, their homework increases to one hour per subject per week. This may come as a bit of a shock to some of them. Um, so later in this presentation, I have highlighted a few of the ways you can help support them at home. Um, so I wanted to go over quickly what they are learning in a few of their core subjects. If we start with science, um, they'll be covering all three sciences, looking at chemical reactions in chemistry, the biology of disease in biology, and a universe full of energy in physics. To best support your child, please encourage them to engage with all of the available resources, a few of which you can see on the screen now. Um, when it comes to English, well, over summer, the students have 
read the Goose Road and I've been looking at all of their kind of quiz results that we have had um, come through to, to Miss Applequist, our librarian at Lower School, and this has helped them prepare for their first unit in English, which is war poetry, but it also helped build their cross-curricular links with the topics they're learning about in history. Um, students will then move on to read Animal Farm, learning about the novella's historical, cultural and social significance, while being introduced to literary and critical thinking. Later on, they'll use those critical thinking skills they've developed by reading, watching and performing one of Shakespeare's tragedies, Othello, exploring the brilliant Willie Russell play, Blood Brothers, and developing the skills they will require for their English language GCSEs. Outside of their English lessons, we will have our pastoral reading project in year nine, it's of Mice and Men. Um, the purpose of this is to really enjoy reading the book together and model that habitual reading that I hope we can demonstrate at home as well. Um, it's hoped that all students will participate by reading aloud and joining in the discussions of the book. These will support the students' understanding of the narrative, but also allow them to explore key themes and concepts and link to contemporary news stories. In maths, the students will continue to develop their knowledge and skills in algebra, sequences, transformations, and that's just in the first half term. Um, Again, please support them by checking that Dr Frost regularly and encouraging regular revision throughout the year, perhaps through CGP revision guides, perhaps through making some flashcards, maybe fortnightly to keep that information available to them throughout the year. Um, they are the three core subjects. Obviously, they are learning all of their GCSE, um, their choices for GCSE, they'll be doing those and the other subjects alongside them. I did want to touch a little bit about wellbeing. I mentioned it earlier. Um, it's so important that our students always feel supported with the various different situations they will face throughout their school career. Um, I know there's lots of different things that can affect your child's wellbeing. It might be general physical health, influence of social media, friendships, anxiety, and there's a spectrum of well-being it could be mentally well to mentally ill and I think there's lots of stages in between. In school we have a range of different ways we can help support your your child, our students, some of which I've shown on the, uh, the slide here. I think importantly for me, if you have any concerns I hope that you will reach out to your child's form tutor or to myself or any other member of the staff body so that we can support your child if you're noticing at home that they are struggling with their well-being. Um, Looking ahead to year nine and some of the exciting things that we have to look forward to. Um, some key dates for your diary. Open evening is on the 6th of October. There'll be an early finish at midday on that day and then a late finish on the 7th of October. Internal assessment fortnight, the first time that your sh your children will be graded at their, their target grades for GCSE, uh, which Mr Oakley will discuss a little bit more later. That's the 11th to the 22nd. Learning Review Day is the 25th of November, and then Parents' Evening for Year 9 is on the 1st of December. They are just the key dates for you to put in for this term. There's also lots of other very exciting things that Year 9 will be able to do throughout the year. Careers Day, house events, their final GCSE, options evenings and choices for the year 10 and 11, the transition to upper school at the end of the year. Hopefully the plan at the moment, situation permitting, is to take part in our first residential trip since year seven. Um, I know that the year group are really looking forward to that. It's something that I'm particularly looking forward to doing if we are able to. Um, we also have Gradfest, which is the big celebration that um, as they move over to upper school at the end of the year. I really appreciate everything that you do to support your child's education at home. Key to success at school, I believe, is us working together. Um, so please do continue to attend school meetings and events like this, but also the ones that I've mentioned before, the LRD and things like that. Um, please be aware of key dates and support your students with preparing themselves as best as possible. Uh, Building good routines and habits are really important. We do that at school, but also at home, I think around their homework, their use of technology, social media, and of course sleep. Um, we'd also really ask for your help with making sure students are getting the real basics at school right. In particular, the correct uniform and equipment. If our conversations at school can focus on academic progress rather than ensuring they've got their pens or ensuring that they're 
uniform is correct. It would really help them push on going into year 10. Um, I do encourage you to regularly use the online tools that are available, showing my homework class charts where you can get a, a measure of their merits and behaviour codes through the year. Um, I know there's often a, quite an overwhelming amount of online tools, but key ones for your, your children to be aware of are their school email, show my homework and Microsoft Teams. If they can, as long as they've got access to those three, we can help support them throughout the year. Um, as mentioned before, providing your child with wider learning opportunities and encouraging reading at home is a great thing you can do, helping them with their literacy across all subjects um, and just asking them about their learning. As Miss Harrison mentioned earlier, Monday they were desperate to talk about their new subjects with us and I think you as well having that conversation with them, you'll find the, the, the joy they have in taking on these new subjects. Um, and finally, please do encourage your child to get involved with extracurricular opportunities at school. I think it's one of the key things that we missed over this past couple of years. Um, so I'm really adamant that all of year nine should have at least one extracurricular activity that they are getting involved with, even outside of enrichment, where they are getting involved with wider school life. Um, I'm now going to pass over to Miss Oakley, who will talk in a bit more detail about how your child's targets have been established and how we can use GCSE grades in school. Thank you, Mr. Constantino. Um, am I live? Thank you, Mr. Constantino. Uh, right. OK, so um, as Ms. Harrison and Mr. Constantino said, I'm all about the, the data, so the progress and the attainment of the students. Um, and I'm simply going to share some slides with you to talk through how we set our targets and what that means uh, for your child. So I'm just going to um, share my screen. OK, so uh, I'll be talking about GCSE grades uh, nine to one and, and what they mean and how we set our targets, as I said, and what we mean by excellent progress and then the journey through year nine, 10 and 11 from an assessment perspective and what the key dates are and the key events. OK, so target grades, we will shortly be uh, setting target grades for all year nine students and we will share them with you um, in a couple of weeks time uh, by an email and you'll be able to see exactly what the target grades are for your child. So I thought it'd be helpful to explain how we actually go about working those out. So we set targets based on an organisation called Fisher Family Trust. They collect data uh, nationally from how students have performed in all of their subjects um, over the last five years. And they factor in things like gender and date of birth and come up with a statistical um, estimate of what a, a typical student with the same starting points would come out with. So in other words, a student with the same SAT score from primary school doing the same subjects over the last five years will give a percentage chance of a certain grade. And that's what we use to work out the most suitable target grade. We then benchmark ourselves against the top 20% of schools in the country. So that gives us a, a way of making sure we are aiming for the, the better grades than average um, nationally. Um, but of course, we always believe that with uh, hard work and application, then some students will beat those target grades um, as some of our current year 11s are likely to do. So we would always say target grades are there as a starting point. Um, and if a child or parents feel that a higher target grade is appropriate and we agree, then we would always move those target grades up. Um, like I said, uh, the targets are never meant to be limiting. They're, they're a minimum expectation of what we think your child is capable of based on their starting points from primary school. So just to give us sort of um, a hard example of how this works, uh, because you're going to be getting your first progress report uh, just before learning review day in November, um, and you'll see target grades and some colours, and I want to explain how those colours are derived. So this is an example of a fictitious student called James. Um, James came to us with a primary uh, scores in reading of 101 and maths of 106, which means James is, is slightly above uh, national expectations. So even as your child joins us in year seven, we know what those scores are and therefore we would know what sort of GCSE grades they, they might be expected to achieve. So from that data, we can use Fisher Family Trust to tell us what their target grade might be for English, Maths and Science, and of course, then all their other subjects as well. So that target grade, which you will see, is based on Fisher Family Trust. Like I said, we benchmark ourselves against the top schools in the country, and then we also round up as well, just to give a little extra archer sprinkle to make those targets really aspirational. We then do actually set a further grade higher, which is a really aspirational grade, which they could get um, if they really, really went for it 
um, throughout their time at Archer Academy. So we have that data from primary school. We can set those targets. We will do that in the next few weeks and then let you know what those targets are. When you get your first progress report, we would then work out, say, for example, James was working at a, uh, a weak grade three in English and a, a stronger grade three in maths and a, and a strong grade two in science um, in year nine. Um, we would then project forward to what we call our working towards grade. So we would expect a, a couple of grades progress um, during the course of, uh, of two years of study on average. But of course, some students may do more than that and some less. Um, so in this example, uh, we could work out what we think that student is heading towards if they carried on um, at the same sort of level of application um, throughout their, the rest of the time here. So that gives us a trajectory of where that student is, is heading towards. The two important grades here are what James is heading towards in English, which is a five, a week grade five, and what his target is, what he should get based on his starting points, which is also a five. And because James is pre pretty much in line there, the colour on the report will be green to say that um, if he carries on as he's going, he's going to hit that target grade. In maths, um, the same student, even though he's doing a bit better in maths, his target is higher because his key stage two score is higher. Um, and therefore, a five plus in maths is actually slightly below his target. And therefore, we would colour that orange to indicate um, he's not quite where he needs to be, but he's not too far away. Uh, in science, um, James is looking like he's heading towards a stronger grade four but his target is a grade six and therefore we're a bit more concerned there. There's a bigger gap and therefore we would color that pink on the report. So when you get your first report um, just before learning review day in November, um, those colors give an indication not just of where the student is heading towards, um, but where they should be based on their starting points. So you can actually see some, some real useful information there to help you support your child and understand what those grades actually mean. So um, the top grades uh, in the country now, as, as most people are getting used to, but still if you're, this is your first child going through secondary school, um, you may be used to the old A, a star to C. So a top grade nine in, is, is the top uh, gold standard now. That requires exceptional ability and knowledge. We had about 160 grade nines across all subjects in the last cohort, um, but they are really uh, quite hard to get um, and students should be uh, really delighted if they get anywhere near a grade nine. Those with targets of grade nines um, may find when they're in year nine that they have quite a lot of pink on their report. And this is simply because um, partway through year nine, your teachers will not really know enough about you as students to predict that you will end up with a grade eight or a grade nine by the time they get to the end of year 11. So because this is such a difficult grade to achieve, we can't really be confident enough um, during the course of year nine to say, yes, we're confident you're going to get to a grade nine. And therefore, students with the very, very high targets might find quite a bit more pink um, on their report going through year nine. But we would hope that that would change um, as they prove themselves going through into year 10 and they start to show enough evidence and uh, uh, capability to, to justify a prediction of a grade nine or, or grade eight. So if you are being predicted a grade seven in year nine, then you are pretty well placed to push for the top grades as you move into years 10 and year 11. Even though your report may be pink because you've got very high targets, uh, we don't want you to worry too much if your grade is a, is your predicted grade is a grade seven. So I hope that's, that's clear, um, but I think that will become much clearer once you start to see the first reports when they come out. So what do these grades actually mean and, and what's important? So a grade four um, is considered to be a pass, what we call a standard pass. And a grade five is now considered to be a strong pass. They're both passes. One is obviously stronger than the other. Um, we set our targets as a minimum of a grade four because we want everyone to aspire to pass their GCSEs. So we don't see targets less than a grade four um, anywhere. Um, but it's worth just knowing right from the very start that all students in the country um, are required to get a grade four in English and maths. Um, and if they don't, then they will need to keep studying those two subjects at GCSE level, whatever they do once they leave Archer Academy. So whatever college or apprenticeship you're going to, if you don't have a four in English and maths, then you are expected to continue uh, to try and pass those two courses at that level. Um, if you want to go on to study A levels, then you are going to need grade sixes at least. Um, most colleges uh, have entry requirements around the grade six mark. Um, and Woodhouse actually has a requirement of a grade six in your best eight subjects, as well as a six in English language and maths. 
Okay, so there's just a, a sort of uh, a benchmark of where you need to get to if you want to get into those colleges. And if you want to go and study certain courses like maths and science, then you're probably looking at the grade seven in those particular GCSEs. So you'll get much more information about college requirements and so on as you go through year nine and year 10, but just worth just flagging up right now uh, where you need to get to to get to those colleges. Um, I think I've already said a grade nine is, is uh, the top end of the old eight star grade and is the new gold standard. That's what um, everyone would love to have, but are very, very difficult to achieve. Um, if you're aiming for the Russell Group universities, the better universities in the country, then your GCSE should be really, really be full of sevens, eights and nines. And if you want to get to Oxford and Cambridge, you really want to be looking at eights and nines only. Um, so that's just to give you a sense of, of where you need to get to. And then there's the EBAC qualification, which is something which you automatically get given if you get a grade five in either English literature or language, maths, science, either history or geography, and then a, a language, which in this school is French or Spanish. So if you achieve a grade five in all those five subjects, um, then you automatically get the EBAC qualification, and that could be a useful uh, marker for universities and employers in the future. We don't really know how that's going to pan out, but the government is very keen on as many students as possible achieving that standard in those five subjects. And our whole options process is designed to make sure students can put themselves in a position to be able to pass all those courses at that level. So moving on to the options process. So in year nine, um, the students will get a lot of information about uh, what to, to choose for their GCSEs going into year 10 and year 11. Um, so the core subjects which all students will study would be literature and language in English, maths, um, at least a science double award, so two GCSEs in science, um, a language or functional skills, geography or history, but it can be both. Um, and then uh, there'll also be core PE and core spec, um, which is uh, the sociology, uh, politics, philosophy um, and, and so on, a, a clutch of subjects which gives you the knowledge uh, to be able to function in, in wider society, if you like. So those are the, are the core subjects, um, but there'll be a lot more information there about what um, the students have on offer to them. There'll be some evenings, assemblies and activities uh, to help choose the further subjects um, they wish to go on to uh, a GCSE to make up their nine GCSEs. And then in addition to that, we also have um, enrichment, which um, goes into Archer Plus, as we call it, and that allows a further qualification in something like Duke of Edinburgh, further maths um, and so on. What exactly that offer is going to be, we can't say at this stage, um, but those are the sorts of subjects which we've had in the past. Just to give you uh, a quick overview of the sorts of subjects the students can choose, um, I won't read them all out, but there's um, that's what we've had on offer for the last couple of years, and it's likely to be the same again, but of course it does depend on staffing, um, but that is likely to be the offer. Uh, most students will be choosing three of those subjects uh, to go into year 10 and year 11. So the journey through year 9 and 10 and 11, uh, Mr. Constantini has already referenced a few key dates and a term ahead. Um, but there will obviously be uh, quite a lot of coursework in, in certain subjects. If you choose some of those subjects to go into GCSE standard, um, then the coursework still exists, although there is a lot less coursework than there was going back 10 years or so. Um, all of the content which is being studied from this day onwards or from the start of term could potentially be examined in the GCSEs in June 2024. So it's worth noting that we have actually started the Key Stage 4 courses um, and therefore we use this time to, to cover some of the content. Uh, most students will complete nine GCSEs. Um, most of those GCSEs will have two or three written exams. So if you work it out, you're probably looking at an exam period um, of about 25 or 30 written exams spread out over five weeks. Um, that hasn't happened for the last couple of years in this country because of COVID, but uh, we fully expect by the time your child gets to GCSEs that that is what they'll be faced with. And therefore we'll be doing a lot of um, practice and preparation to get them ready for that kind of intense exam period. All exams will be handwritten, that's uh, pretty much guaranteed. Um, so therefore the technique and recall um, will be key for success and that's what we'll be starting to drill the students in as they go through the next few years. Um, so there'll be plenty of uh, exam practice, plenty of assessments going through the next uh, two and a half years. Um, but the three key dates would be the end of year nine exams, which will be towards the back end of this academic year. Um, then in the year 10, we have our one year to go exams and they're called that because there is literally one year to go uh, until the GCSEs. That will be um, just after Easter. And then in, in year 11, there's some mock exams just before Christmas and then another set 
uh, just before Easter holidays. And that is um, those are the key exam sessions the students will go through uh, during the course of the next two and a half years. And at that stage, I would hand back to Miss Harrison. Thank you very much, Mr Oakley, and I've got no doubt there's been some big gulps as parents as you begin to um, look at the structures and systems that are in place there. What's really key um, is that any targets we set your child, they are a minimum. Your child is a wonderful human being and is capable of great things. We have statistically created those targets based on instructions that we are given by the Department for Education and they're very much a minimum. Um, anything is possible as we enable your child to realise the potential. So please do uh, bear that in mind as we initially share with you quite a statistically generated um, target. What's going to happen now is that you're going to uh, dip out of this session and click on the second link, which will take you into the session with your child's form tutor, where they will focus on uh, more of the kind of practicalities of life um, in year nine. But for me, really, it's to be clear that my expectations of your wonderful child are the same as they have always been, that they make themselves proud, that they make you proud and that they make me proud by ensuring that they are always doing the very best that they can do, that their effort is the most important thing, that they're working hard, being nice to themselves and nice to one another. Very much look forward to supporting you and them through year nine and to seeing you in person very soon. So please, if you want to click out of this meeting and click onto the next one with um, your child's form tutor. See you very soon. Thank you. Bye bye.